Welcome to ATRMCHRU Virtual Research Classroom Following are a few reminders before we begin. It is helpful to use a two-way earphones and headset for clearer audio input. Lectures are in PowerPoint presentation. Device must be in full screen mode for better viewing. Questions, you may send them to our email address. Answers to your questions will be posted in the virtual classroom as a separate Q&A video as soon as available. After this lecture, an assessment form will be sent to you. Kindly accomplish this form to receive your certificate of attendance. This may be viewed on demand on our YouTube channel. Thank you. Welcome to the Virtual Research Classroom. I'm Dr. Maria Rosel E. Guzman, Head of the Information Management Systems of the Hospital Research Unit. Today, I will be introducing our next speaker. Dr. Mark Jerome G. Mauricio is a Fellow of the Philippine College of Radiology and City MRI Society of the Philippines. He finished both his Bachelor of Science in Public Health and Doctor of Medicine at the University of the Philippines, Manila. He finished his residency in radiology and fellowship in City MRI at the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital. He is an active medical consultant at the Ilocos Training and Regional Medical Center, wherein he is the assistant chair of the Research Integrity Committee of the Hospital Research Unit. He has authored several papers for which one garnered recognition from the Philippine College of Radiology to talk about the common pitfalls in scientific paper writing. Let us all welcome Dr. Mark Jerome G. Mauich. Writing a scientific paper is not an easy process, and it is also not one that comes to everyone naturally. Most of us doctors may be highly skilled at generating and collecting data, but the ability to put together a well-crafted paper may be less well-developed. Good day to everyone. On behalf of the ITRMC Hospital Research Unit, welcome to another virtual research classroom as part of the Hospital Research Lecture Series. I am Dr. Marcelo Mauricio, and for today's lecture, I will be discussing the common pitfalls in scientific paper writing. I have divided my lecture into discussing the pitfalls with each part of the research manuscript, which includes the introduction, materials and methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. Authors often underestimate the introduction, the first section of a manuscript, in both its relevance and its complexity. The most common mistake is to, to write a too long introduction. After great efforts to obtain several reviews of literature, some authors tend to cling to the number and quality of their literature search and want to share it with others. The major problem here is that most of us are not interested in long, non-objective texts. It is important that the scope of information presented in the introduction, including the review of literature, should be concise and relevant. There is no specific size limit of the introduction. But the rule of thumb is to limit the word count to about 10% of the total number of words in the manuscript. Second, and related to the first one, is the lack of coherence. The introduction often begins with a paragraph that contextualizes the theme of the study and presents the state of the art of what is under analysis. Then, authors should gradually guide the reader's thoughts to the objectives of the study which are always described in the last paragraph of the introduction. In addition, ideas should be organized so that immediately before reading the objective, the reader understands the relevance of the topic and anticipates which gap in knowledge has to be filled. An outline of the flow of the information written in the introduction may be helpful in organizing your ideas. The number of references should be limited to what is actually necessary. The most innovative studies tend to list few references, and an excessively large number of quotes has a negative effect on the most qualified readers, as it suggests that the study does not bring anything new to the literature. 
or that references were included without following any criterion. When using references to other studies, we should avoid using the name of authors in the text or especially as the subject of sentences. Older manuscripts used to mention numerous names of authors, but today it doesn't matter who the author of a sentence or idea is. The important element is the level of evidence provided by the source. Here are two different styles of writing which highlight the above mentioned pitfall. In the first example, the main element of the sentence is the author, while in the second, the information provided gains prominence. Next part of the manuscript is the materials and methods section. The function of this section is to describe all experimental procedures, including controls. The most common mistake is the lack of transparency in methods in the study. Authors often submit incomplete descriptions of their studies, which has a negative impact on its reproducibility. Any scientific study when read by another person must always be reproducible. So it is important to include these things in the section. So this includes the sampling method, randomization method, matching technique, blinding, population, intervention, comparator, outcome, and time components, inclusion and exclusion criteria, study scope, so if it's preventive, therapeutic, diagnostic, or prognostic, study design, data collection tool with validity and reliability. A very common error is not to include a detailed description of statistical methods. Several factors may explain this absence. The most important thing be is that most authors have a limited knowledge of statistics, which complicates the preparation of this manuscript section. If so, you may ask a statistician for help regarding the statistical methods as they should be published. Another pitfall is the lack of approval by an institutional review board or ethics and research community. So in our hospital, the Hospital Research Unit's Ethics Review Board has the duty to review and approve your research paper. This ensures that your manuscripts meet the standard of ethics in conducting the study. All the materials and methods section should be written in the past tense because methods refer to what has been done and not to something that will be or is currently being carried out. Next is the results section. The function of this section is to summarize, summarize general trends in the data without comment, bias, or interpretation. The results of statistical tests applied to your data are reported in this section. All the conclusions about your original hypothesis are saved for the discussion, discussion section. Most commonly, the results section is very short, which summarizes findings insufficiently. Some authors will just state the main outcome of interest or have a statement such as, there were no other statistically significant findings between other groups. Authors must report all outcomes and statistical analysis, again, for the reproducibility of the research. While this may be difficult to do with a broad approach, one may use tables and appendices to report all outcomes to show transparency and limit researcher bias. The choice of an appropriate visual aid, such as tables or charts or graphs, will depend not only on how you want to present your data, but also with the types of data on hand and how you want to show the relationships between the given variables. Tables focus readers on the most important results and should not be redundant with the written content. Make call-outs to the table in the paper's narrative sections, but do not state information found in tables. Another is the improper use of graphs. Here are two different graphs representing the same set of data. The graph above shows improper axis starting points and or scale, which may give a misleading appearance that differences are statistically significant. The truncated y-axis such that 0 to 40 is missing in the upper graph makes the differences appear large, whereas in the lower graph, the scale properly begins at 0 
and the graph is vertically compressed, which visually suggests that the differences are really smaller. The discussion and inclusion is the heart of all scientific studies and the section where the authors should express their interpretative creativity and capacity. This section is where the authors may be bold, make propositions and suggestions, and explain results. In other words, this is where they may introduce innovative interpretations. At the same time, this is where criticism to other studies that have noteworthy flaws should be made. The most common error in this section is to write it as a literature review. The discussion section should not be a review of the literature. It should compare and contrast findings with those reported by other authors and explain their differences and similarities. It should explain why your research provides an impactful contribution to the topic. Another frequent shortcoming is failing to include a presentation of the study limitations. Honesty in clearly presenting limitations shows that the authors analyze their study comprehensively. Failing to include limitations may convey the idea that the authors simply did not understand the exact scope of the study that they have conducted. Readers will want to learn more about your limitations, such that ways you can improve your research and implications the limitations have on your research question. Any published study has to deal with all the results presented in the discussion section. As a rule, if a set of data was presented, it must be discussed. Not included in this rule are minor details such as data distribution normality and error of the method, which are discussed only when they have such relevant impact on data that they deserve specific consideration. Researchers should align their conclusions to their own results and highlight the significance of their findings. It is important that you do not extrapolate beyond the results of your study. Other minor pitfalls that may have big impact in your research manuscripts are as follows. So poor or updated references, so references should be up to date, maximum 10 years of publication year, and list of references should be completely mentioned in the text. Next is poor grammar and language. Remember that this is a scientific paper that you are writing. So it is very important that appropriate editing should be done so that potentially confusing statements and grammatical errors will be removed from the text prior to submission. Next is improper and inconsistent formatting of text and paragraphs. And lastly, poor quality of images such as physical examination findings, gross interoperative findings, or diagnostic images. For the past couple of minutes, I have shared with you some of the common pitfalls in scientific paper writing, particularly highlighting those that are commonly made with each part of the research manuscript. To those of you who are currently writing research papers or planning on doing a research study, a good place to start learning different styles of scientific writing is to read in respect, read um, studies in respected journals, examine their organization, style, and presentation. You should continuously create and write focused and concise scientific papers, similar to others' um, activities in life, success, is directly proportional to the amount of time, effort, and attention that you put into it. Thank you for listening. And again, this is Dr. Mauricio, and have a pleasant day to everyone. Don't forget to like. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to be in the loop for new lectures.